Whoa, that was awesome. <laughs> It is currently Monday, about 8 a.m. Yesterday, I wake up to a text from Ted being like, hey, let's do the Shred X Vermont thing starting tomorrow, which is today. And I was like, oh man, I don't know, I guess, uh, let me check my calendar. I guess I can do that. But we've basically been planning a gravel bike packing, beer centric rad bike trip for a while and we both had a free chunk of time, so we were like, let's do this thing. A quick disclaimer, we won't actually be camping. We'll be camping with our credit cards, which is also fun. I have not done much bike packing before, and I actually don't have any bags, so I need to go over to Peter's house to grab a bag to be able to put my extra clothes and camera gear, because I'm gonna ride with this thing. Gertrude is mad at me for going. I don't think I look my best self in this light. <laughs> Must find bike packing bag. Oh shit. Yeah. Can we go all the way? Yeah. Come to this four corner intersection. It's gonna be gnarly uphill. Go up and down the hill and stay straight. You're gonna come out on the main road, come right into Rochester. Sick. Yeah. That's a great, that'll be a great freaking morning ride. Bike packing Vermont, so what? Bike packing versus credit card bike packing. The difference? You're like, what, what are your thoughts? Like I think credit card bike, Kim and I want to do that. We want to go credit card bike packing in Scotland. We want to go and just stop at inns and B&Bs and pubs and everything along the way and just bring minimal stuff. But with Cradle to Gravel, I can do that. I just wear the same stuff all day, day and night. It's just the way, it's the way you have to do it. Put it on in the morning, take it off at night. <laughs> he, one, gave me two bags, which I'm grateful for. That's gonna be sweet, I carry my stuff. And then he also gave us, he actually has done this route before with one of his other biking buddies. And he gave me a bunch of tips on how what roads to take north of South Royalton and how to drop into Rochester. There's this old mountain pass called Randolph Pass or something that's mainly gravel but a lot of class four but crazy crazy steep but it's really cool and it drops you straight into Rochester on a really kind of <clears throat> back way so we're gonna try and see if we can find that and explore that. Should be good. So basically the point is like we could do a two-dayer, or if we go all the way to three, I want to be prepped earlier in the day. On if I'm going to have to come down here and get a car and go home and drive. Setting out for an intrepid voyage. What are we doing? Eats the heck out of me. <laughs> That's my horn, so people know we're coming. This is about as last minute as it gets. I got back from Arkansas when I was supposed to be going to California, and I suddenly found myself with three days that I didn't have previously planned to be free on my schedule. So this is something that I've been scheming for a long time with you, Ansel, behind the camera. How do we do a trans-Vermont trip, and how do we fit it into just a couple days? So this is this is a practice run of sorts. We're gonna see what, what bikepacking Vermont in the fall is all about. It's mildly warm, it's a little bit damp, it's fall in New England, it's freaking stunning. Killer colors. So we're gonna go up, snake on some cool, cool gravel roads up through the center of the state. Destination, Waitsfield. Lawson's Finest Liquids. Ahoy! We're headed north to the wall! On the Overland course. Like three hours and 28 miles in. Just kidding, I think we're about four miles in. We have just passed South Woodstock. We're probably gonna make it all the way to Woodstock so as to keep some momentum going. Um, I'm gonna defer to the local for, for where we're gonna go. Where are we going, Ansel? 
Hello. I think we're gonna go to Montvier Cafe. Ooh. Caffeinate ourselves. We don't know if we want to start the drinking this early. What do you think? I mean, I don't know. You can't drink all day unless you start in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how we're gonna get there. We're gonna go over hill and dale and ride a lot of roads just like these. We have a rough route we want to take, but that's what's kind of fun. We just get to wing it. Drove down to West Windsor, met Ansel. We've now ridden to Woodstock. And we're gonna snake up across over here to Waitsfield. Welcome to Vermont. 69 in New Hampshire since 1843. That date is not right. Where's our next stop? Are you starting to feel fatigued? <laughs> no, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I'm feeling warmed up. Tree sugar. Well, the great wolf of South Royalton just came storming at us. This 120 pound beast chased us ferociously. And then we found out that he or she was quite nice and wanted to ride with us for a while. A friendly doggy. Worthy Burger is amazing. It is incredibly lush, farm fresh patties, or veggie burger if that's your thing, and the most extensive beer list uh, that, that all of South Royalton has. The place is incredible. It's, uh, I think, a former, what, railroad stop. The place is mind blowing. Uh, I first came here with a good friend of mine, Chris Milliman, and he was doing the UV Epics, Upper Valley Epics, and I was like, dude, this place is so cool. I didn't realize that you could have like, killer burger spots with amazing beer in the middle of nowhere. And now I make this a regular stop anytime I'm going up and down the 89 corridor. So it's a real bummer it's closed. They don't open for another three and a half hours and it's probably a stretch to see us staying here for that. 33 miles into the ride. What are you thinking? I'm balking. Once upon a time I used to be super fit. I think that time is coming past. It's similar. <laughs> Sopping, slightly slow gravel, hard pack. It's hard pack, but it's just a little bit damp. Takes it out of you. My bike grew a tail. It's slowing me down. Whew. While Tedward is peeing, I'll tell you how I'm feeling. I was bonking at around mile 28, leaving South Royalton. I think I had a bit too much caffeine. But now I feel good after a snack, but I think it's lunchtime, so we're gonna try and find some food here in the next town we roll through. Can we get food in Randolph? Yeah. Where are we at? How Boy. you feeling? What are we coming up on? Whew. Final KOM of the day. We're here at Roxbury Gap. The east side, east going west. It's gonna take us up and over and drop us into Waitsfield, which is sweet, so nearly done with the day. This is one of the six gaps. If you're gonna pull off a six gapper here in Vermont, it is an often overlooked and ferocious climb. Shoot, I reckon it's probably eight to 10% average, and then the final, I forget, mile or so is all pavement, oh, sorry, all gravel at a wicked, wicked steep, frustrating pitch. Ow. Four hours, 19 minutes pedal time. I feel like we've been pedaling for like eight to 10 hours. Covering 72 miles, 7,000 feet of climbing. A uh, whole lot of fun. We saw sun, a little bit of sun, not much. A whole lot of mist, a whole lot of post peak foliage, a lot of gravel, a little bit of pavement, very, very few cars. 
I call it a perfect Monday in, uh, in November. I like Buffalo Blue, I like a backyard barbecue, I like a bourbon barbecue. Occasionally I like uh, mesquite barbecue, although not red, I like a sea salt and vinegar. Welcome to our Airbnb. I feel like I should be putting on my bathrobe, but I only have a towel because rule number one about camping, don't bring too many things. I forgot my pants. Um, welcome to the kitchen. Nice spot here, quite pleased with this. It has a coffee maker that is excellent. Uh, not much going on in the fridge, nice dining area. We've got Ansel's bed here in the form of a sick futon. We've got a washer dryer, which is wonderful, although the out of service sign means we can't do our laundry. Conveniently, we did bring clean kit. Clean kit. And then here is here's where the magic happens. This glass in the door, just in case. Who knows what? And uh, I'm excited that I have a television, so I'm gonna go mindlessly let my brain melt. This is camping at its finest, folks. This is how you credit card camp. This is how you make your way clear across any place you wanna go. This is truly an introduction to point to point bike packing. It was, it was a freaking blast to get through day one. Let's get a good night's sleep and then onward to day two. Dude, I think your bike rolls quicker than mine. I totally agree. Winter is coming. A double silo! It's a double silo! <laughs> it's a triple! Oh my god, it's a triple! <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that! Never seen that before! deep, deep into this sweet gravel road. It's funny, Route 100 is right down there about mm, half mile and this road parallels that. I've ridden Route 100 dozens and dozens and dozens of times, probably close to 100 times. I've never ridden this road. And now we've reached the critical point where we're about to get down here, hit a left and go up the class four, which is gonna parallel the mighty ferocious Rochester Gap. So, totally uncharted territory. We're about two hours in, 3,000 feet of climbing. All things good. Hardest time in Vermont. Hardest climb of the trip. That would be a lot of fun without a pack. It was fun as is. I say my bike steers a little bit drunk with this up front, but man, that was super cool. Good work, Gilead Road, A plus. day. One beer feels like six. Uh, a little chilly, a little hungry. Oh man, I could go for a bowl of chili right now. That sounds delicious. Uh, and the final miles are always the most painful. Tired, a little sleepy. Two consecutive days where you're in kit for seven plus hours, even if you're only riding for four and a half or five. That'll take it out of you. The hard pack gravel roads here that are characteristic of Vermont are really damp and slowing you down. So that'll, that'll take it out of you. You gotta push another you know, 10, 15 walks to keep the speed that you might be accustomed to. It's late in the season. It's late October, early November right around the corner. So I think just this time of year, riding easy sounds a lot, 
a lot more fun. So, I think all these things come together to make for uh, a slow but super fun Shred X Vermont year one.